uh, and time. And uh, I've twisted Brad's arm into giving us a, maybe a little retrospective and date on the current state of poor Thaiku, but it may be necessary for him to say what exactly it is first before he yeah, starts let, on let me, uh, all of that. Let me, uh, let me, let me go ahead and do that. Um, so, uh, sorry, Kevin, I cut off your introduction. Apologies. Long, long again. Anyways. Um, uh, um, so, uh, for those of you who have not seen it, uh, at, at fourthsalon.appspot.com, um, this is fourth haiku and it is, um, it is a, uh, a tool to allow you to use uh, a fourth adjacent language uh, to create beautiful pictures, sounds, uh, and, and animations. And uh, let me let me sort of start by just walking you through what it means to create a haiku. So I'm going to click on create haiku, which you can get to from the main the main page here. And um, one of the key things that I think made it a little viral and sticky, as as Kevin uh, suggests, is that uh, it has the option, as I'll show you in a moment, to create a derived work. So you, you don't have to start from scratch. You can take someone else's haiku and make an embellishment. And you might wonder, well, why is, why is this, uh, why am I calling these a fourth haiku? Well, they are, uh, these are very small programs that uh, are being executed by the, uh, the GPU over and over again per pixel. And so uh, a different name for this kind of a thing is uh, what, it, what uh, graphics folks will call a, a pixel shader or a fragment shader. And uh, the idea is that it's something that is uh, structured in a way to be able to, to nicely take advantage of the parallelism of the GPU. But it turns out that fourth is a particularly uh, uh, dense and effective syntax for this type of thing. Um, and so uh, the, the way to, to think of this is this is a, a fourth in which uh, the, there's a fairly limited vocabulary and there's some documentation on the site I'll show you in a moment, but um, the, uh, the stack is a floating point stack. There's a return stack and a, uh, and a data stack, but they are, they're all floating points. So all of the typical uh, words that you would use uh, uh, that would be integer in a conventional fourth are uh, just implicitly, implicitly floating point. And that's because, uh, for a very specific reason, uh, it's because a lot of the graphics hardware uh, sort of natively operates on 32-bit on uh, floating point values. And so uh, there's, there tends to be uh, a lot of additional efficiency that you get in converting it to an underlying shader by, by having that be the representation. There's um, a lot of the, the core vocabulary is there um, but there are a few special words that have a significance just in this language that, that are, are kind of basic core words. Uh, and there's, they're pretty easy to remember. There's uh, the word X, which, which gives you the X coordinate at any given time uh, as, your, as your haiku is being rendered. The, the variable Y, which gives you the Y coordinate. Um, and as we'll see in a moment, there's actually also a T variable, which gives you the time uh, in seconds. And um, the slightly confusing thing for someone coming from a, from a conventional fourth is that um, by default, um, the entirety of the program is being executed, I'm uh, sorry, the entirety of the, the text that you input is being executed once per pixel uh, in, in the display above. And so uh, the way to think of it is you're really writing a program that's going to get you know, fanned out and run millions of times. And so the simplest possible program is probably I'm going to put put in just the just the the word X, and the word X on its own, uh, as you can see, uh, just has a, a a value that varies from from zero on the left hand side to to one on the right right hand side, and being that it's executed at each pixel position, you end up with uh, you end up with a uh, a red value that goes from zero to one, and I forgot to mention a critical detail, which is that um, the expectation is that what you will leave on the stack will be uh, an RGB value or, and this is mostly just to make sure that more haiku, haikus will execute correctly with, uh, with less code, um, you can leave a single value and you'll just 
effect to the red, uh, the, the red value. If you leave two values, you'll get red and green. And if you leave three, uh, you'll get blue. And actually, if you put a fourth value, you'll get an alpha value, a transparency value. And so if we instead use the word Y and we push this little, little up arrow to, to update the haiku, uh, now we, we see that we get a gradient that goes vertically. So it goes from zero at the bottom. And this is you know, sort of math coordinates. So uh, zero, zero in the left-hand corner and one, one in, in the upper right. And we could, uh, we could, for example, do this in two dimensions. So we leave an X and a Y, then we're gonna have, uh, uh, well, let me click the button. We're gonna have red varying as we go horizontally and uh, green going vertically. And uh, for example, if we wanted to maybe just add in some blue, we could do, put a 0.5. And now we've we've added a, a blue component that's that's just being added uniformly across the whole thing. So you would think offhand this this, this sounds nice, but but what what can you do with this? Well, um, more uh, sort of uh, more interesting is that you can start to to mix in some interesting functions, and there are uh, sort of the core math operations. So you could do like x plus y, and now you see a gradient that's kind of going from the from the bottom, um, and it, it clips. Once you get to one, it, it, it clips. Um, so you'll notice that at, at about the diagonal where where everything adds up to one, you, you get a it, it's solid red from there on. If you say divide it by two, um, now you now the, the the one value is only up in the corner there. Um, but you can you can mix in some additional things. So you could say, for example, take x uh, and run it through the sine function, well, that's not very interesting. But if you multiply x by 10, such that you're, you're getting through the period of the sine function in radians, well, then you're going to start to see some bumps. And if you maybe make this 40, now you're going to get a whole bunch of them. And so you're seeing sort of the undulations up and down. And when it gets down to zero, it gets clipped. Um, if you didn't want it to be clipped, you could do the absolute value. And now you, you see the, the pulses in between. And um, you could overlay, you know, let's say the same thing in the, in, in the other dimension. And well, now you start to get a, a picture that's kind of interesting. Maybe you, you could add them together and you get something like that. Or um, maybe you could do a two dupe and, uh, and add those together and you get something like that. Or let's see, why don't we take uh we could do the min the min of them both and you get something a little different so you can quickly build up patterns and the reason for the naming with haiku is that you can actually in a, in a uh you know a haiku is a, a a poem with uh you know five syllables seven syllables and then five syllables on a line and you can actually end up with some uh very terse little programs that uh that do some pretty amazing things now you can incorporate time as i mentioned so for example, if I did, you know, x x times 40, um, and then let's say I add in t, and then I take the sign, um, now I've got, you know, uh, a pattern that's moving. Uh, and um, there's, there's all sorts of fun that you can have in building up uh, different stuff. So let's take a look at what others have created here. Um, before I proceed, actually, are there any questions about, about that for those that haven't seen this before? And um, I, oh, I should mention there's a, a critical thing here, which you do have the ability to define words. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to define the word square, and then let's say I, I wanted to do, um, uh, actually, let, let's even, even go further, and I could do something like distance, where I've got, you know, let's say x and y coming in, and I want to calculate the distance to something. Well, I could take the square of the, the one value, and then do a swap, and the square of the other value, and I add them, and take a square root. Um, and so now, if I did the, the distance from x and y, you see a gradient sort of circularly from the corner. But maybe I, I do, I want to look at everywhere where that's, you know, less than 0.3. Um, and then I can cut out a circle. And if I 
added in the sine of t to the x coordinate. Oops, that's not gonna, that's not quite what I want. But yeah, then you will see it undulate by um, so you can make things move. Um, so let's, yeah, so I'll pause there for any questions that folks had on the, the, the core idea, and then we'll sort of take a little tour through some of the, the cool things. And when I first put this up, I had some general idea of, oh, okay, we could do some interesting things with it, but I was astounded to find that uh, a bunch of folks on the internet who previously had no interest in fourth um, became very interested in, uh, in, in the kinds of things you could do with these very tiny programs. And they have produced some programs that, frankly, I was astounded uh, that you could do as much with as little. So I will, unless there are questions, pause, I will now go and take a, take a little bit of a look here. So some of these are, are so this is, there's a, a way for folks to vote and, and bubble things up to the top. Um, but I'll, let, me, let me go ahead and just uh, uh, pop into a few of these. So this is, uh, this is one, and this one's, I believe, actually a real haiku. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's very dense, but it produces, you know, something quite, quite pretty. And you'll notice, actually, my, uh, my background, actually, is a, is a haiku. In fact, it's one of the very first ones. I think the thing that actually convinced me, let me, I can, there is a search function here. Um, there's, a, there's one called Forspire, which is uh, this, uh, this, haiku, this haiku, I think, is the very first haiku that convinced me that, that in fact, you could have a really tiny program and get something that, that sort of looks interesting and has something um, uh, that comes out of it. And so uh, it's kind of my favorite just because it was the one that sort of convinced me that I, that I had a, an interesting idea here. And the, my background is a slightly muted version of that, uh, oh, that one, in fact, right? Um, I, um, if you look at these, actually, uh, if, I, if I click on this one, for example, you'll see based on... Uh, based on this other haiku. And in fact, when you have one of these haikus, you can go and you can click down here to create a drive work. And so, for example, uh, this one, uh, you know, I, I, I appear to have done some multiplies to, to, scale, the, uh, to scale it into a, a different range, and I can update that and make some, you know, variation on it. And uh, I track, uh, originally when I added the ability to make a drive work, I didn't track uh, sort of who the parent was. And then later, actually, um, if you go back through the archive of, of Fig Talks, there's a, I, I made an attempt to uh, do a difference comparison to find the genealogy of, of the different haikus that are here. But let's, that's enough about Forspire. Let's look at some of these other amazing ones that folks have produced. So uh, this, is, this is a fun one. Um, that, uh, that someone produced. And it's, it's uh, you know, a little, little bit longer, but is, uh, is quite nice. And I believe if there's, um, let's see, uh, what are some other fun ones? There are folks that, uh, you know, have really done astounding things I would never have imagined. And you look at the, look at the size of that. Uh, they're using some very clever math to be able to, uh, to do something like that. Um, and that one actually, you'll notice it's actually derived from, a, from this one, which in turn, is derived from this one. So they sort of started by coming up with a way to, to get that basic pattern, and then they figured out how to uh, uh, superimpose that on a tunnel, which, uh, which is really kind of impressive. And then they, and then they added shading uh, to it. So um, let's see, so what are some other fun ones? Um, there are some sort of dead alleys in, in, the, in the tool. So for example, um, I added the ability at some point, there is a limited ability to have interactivity. And so there is a way to have, uh, you know, this one is doing kind of a basic uh, uh, asteroids type, you know, thing here. Uh, so there is some ability to do interaction, uh, but it's a little weird, to be honest. So you can look at the documentation for how that's done and, uh, you know, things like that. But it's uh, uh, non-trivial non to use and, 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 and kind of doesn't, doesn't compose as well as some of the other ones. Um, some very, very impressive, you know, uh, Beautiful stuff that, that folks have done. Um, uh, one that I was really blown away by was this Pac-Man one that, that someone came up with, uh, and and that's that's really something. And it's it's like it's just this tiny. And I think the thing for me that that that, that, that uh, I think has uh, been very inspiring is that this really just highlights how de how dense and how expressive a, a very small amount of fourth code can be. And I think it it sort of 
you know, illustrates the, uh, you know, this one's a little bigger, but, uh, you know, it's, it, it illustrates the, the, the power of fourth. Uh, and uh, let's see, what are some other fun ones? Uh, oh, this, this road, just, you know, and, and again, that, that, that is not much code to, to do a thing like that. To have those mountains move in the background and the um there's a lot of them are fractal based and this one's you know i, I don't even yeah begin to understand how this particular this is clearly mantle brought derived but i mean look at that <laughs> and you know it's, it's it's one of these things i've i've had amazing feedback from some of the folks involved and there were there were areas where um you know uh, uh, some very careful choices about uh, the behavior, especially some of the transcendental functions, um, the uh, people you know ma made excellent arguments about why things should should work a certain way. Um, some folks have I, I never would have guessed that you could squeeze in uh, bitmap graphics. The the way that the system works is not particularly conducive to to doing that. And if you look at how actually how this is done, they are actually relying on. Um, a bunch of floating point math to then unpack the bit masks for this, which uh, seems particularly uh, impressive. Um, uh, here's another one of mine. You can see my, mine are mine are simple and and uh, you know don't begin to approach the, the cleverness. I think one of the the fascinating things about and actually this is I'm sorry we're on this page here, but one of the other fascinating things to me uh, uh, is that the uh, is that folks have been able to, um, uh, the, the, the folks will go and compete on the size. And so if you watch closely, several of these, there'll be multiple versions. They'll have sort of version one, and then they'll have gone back and made, uh, made, the, uh, uh, made it smaller. They'll compete on the number of bytes. Um, here's a clock, uh, because time is a component, and they've got uh, the hands. And this is actually, um, one other thing, actually, this, this one doesn't show it, but uh, as the um, the fourth actually support that's in here supports uh, uh, Unicode characters, and so uh, folks will use characters from their own uh, their own native character set, and will uh, will do uh, interesting things with that. And you'll see lots of sort of variation of repetition. Oh yeah, I love this this one uh, this primrose flower, and this one is actually a haiku. It's a five seven five. Um, and that that's definitely stands out as as an impressive thing to do in that little space. Um, as you float the cursor over, it will animate these. Um, Dr. Ting way back made a bunch of flags, um, and then uh, and he he did them for a number of different countries. And then I I uh, if you go look at a bunch of these, there's actually duplicates of them because I figured out kind of a preamble that I could stick. Uh, I think it's these few lines here I've forgotten now that you could stick in front of. The haiku that then uh, warps it to uh, to animate on on the surface of a flag, and so uh, so I took each of his flags and then uh, and then uh, uh, sort of made them made them wave. And there's a whole there's a whole bunch of uh, more even some more elaborate ones. I, I don't think they bubbled up by uh, pre the precedent. Sort of the voting is uh, easily cheated, unfortunately, and so a lot of folks will kind of upvote arbitrary things. Um, what are some other fun ones here? Um, not arbitrary. It's the guy's own. Fair, fair enough. Yes, the, yes. I'm questioning the will of the people here. There. No, I mean to say that you can you can just keep voting over and over again, one person. So, um, uh, so yeah. Here's a variation on that uh, uh, yin yang we saw before. Um, oh, another one of the flags. So all, all sorts of interesting stuff, and. Uh, and then the thing that I used to do uh, when we got a lot of these sort of flooding in, and there's uh, there's a gazillions of these, so you can you can spend sort of quite some time uh, looking at all of them. Uh, but um, oh yeah, here's another one where they they managed to do a sprite, and and uh, this one looks like it might animate once the page loads. Maybe not. Okay. Um, so, anyways, let me. Uh, whoop, and it is a little bit intense. If you you need a, you need a sort of a proper GPU to really get get the most uh, bang out of it. It uses WebGL, which is a oh here's a fun wavy one I I managed to figure out for these, these scales. Um, 
the um, so that's a, that's a thing to watch out for. If you hit a performance issue, watching them one by one can be uh, better. There's actually two separate implementations uh, in the system. One of them, uh, actually initially when I did it, it didn't support animation. It would just produce uh, JavaScript code that, that was fast enough that it could generate the 2D image. Um, and then I later made an implementation that translates it to a GPU shader on the fly. And oh, that one's kind of fun, but not the, you know. Um, oh yeah, here's one notice, the fractal 63 bytes where they they were excited to, to squeeze it into this tiny little uh, uh, tiny little program, and they'll use one variable letter, you know, one letter variable names uh, to accomplish that. Um, so um, one one thing that I used to do when these would flow in more regularly is that um, I uh, I would go and there's a slideshow option. It only goes back in time sort of enough that it can preload them uh, for for faster access. So um, we can, uh, I thought we'd do, do uh, close out by going and taking a look at what's been added uh, in the recent past. So starting back in 2021, um, there, as you can see, there are, there's a trickle of, of interesting ones. Um, the, uh, you know, some of them neat but simple. Um, occasionally there, I, I have historically gotten spam where bots will come by and try to submit them, but I've got a, a variety of uh, checks in place to try to reject haikus that appear to be spam. So if you, if you submit a really simple haiku or a haiku that kind of looks spammy, there's a possibility it will get ignored because I've had, uh, I've had to sometimes clean out the database, but I, I think I've hit a pretty good pattern of rules to reject, uh, to reject spam. Um, the um, most of these are pretty simple. We're back in 2021 here. Oh, this one's Pixel Editor Redux. It looks like it's interactive, so I'm able to move around and draw with the cursor. Somebody used the state to do that. I don't recall submitting the, with this one, so I have a sneaking suspicion it's either. Uh, a, uh, I mean, this haiku I remember it is one of mine, but the Bradley Nelson himself one looks like somebody either cut and paste or. Or, or it could be a bot. Some of the bots have gotten clever enough to resubmit existing haikus. Um, but they usually submit programs that don't are invalid. Um, one thing, if you do play around with the tool, um, it has a very simple uh, approach to error handling. So if you put in a haiku that's invalid, it will show solid magenta. Um, and then here's a fun one from last year. Some meta balls bouncing around. And the program looks a little more complex, but not too bad. Um, here's this one looks like a pretty simple program, and this one's pretty simple. Oh, if you I don't know if you can hear that. Some of them do have audio. Audio has been a little bit more of a bust. It's it's challenging to get uh, audio that it's challenging to get audio that uh, works well. Unfortunately, there's, and if you look at, I'll point at the documentation in just a sec. Um, and then here's a few more. I made my background at some point in 2021. Um, and then some very simple ones. This one's kind of neat, stadium view. It's a very small program, it's kind of cool. Um, this one appears not to compile or, or does something that is not obvious. Um, this one's a twisted tower. That's not too bad. Oh, and then here's a good example of uh, some of our friends from uh, uh, Taiwan Fig. Um, they, uh, 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 Sam Chen has done a bunch of work on doing um, uh, tangrams, and these are fairly elaborate. And he's actually done done them in Chinese, um, and uh, and with with uh, a mixture of Chinese and, and non-Chinese words and variables. I think these, these are mostly readable. So some of these animate and do various tangram operations. Oh, this is back from no, as recent as June. So he was, I, I suspect for from that period. And then let's see, this one appears to just be a variation. This one animates interpolating between different poses. Mm 
And this one goes a little faster, it looks like. And here's the boat sailing by. <laughs> and apparently faster for some reason. Not sure the variations here, but he, he, he dates them. No, nope, they hit a heart and, uh, and a different heart and another heart. And this one's interesting. Oh, this looks like it's a variation on one of mine called Streak, but they've done something to it that sort of atomizes it. And then, um, uh, Kevin, what's your preference? Shall I defer the asterisks to later? I did do the hearts, the the, uh, the Christmas star stuff. Maybe I'll leave those off to, for later. Let me um, let me go ahead and exit the slideshow. And uh, if you are trying to get started on this, um, the uh, there's instructions. If you go to what is it, um, there's this list of here are all the here are all the core words and there's a, a glossary that sort of goes into depth and, and tells you everything you would need to know to uh, for each of these so I generally try to as I add support for vocabulary um, the there are some some limitations to be aware of a critical thing is that you're not actually able to loop uh, in these programs the only looping that is allowed to occur is the uh, the execution of the thing per pixel and that's reflecting an underlying uh, limitation of, of what you can do with a WebGL uh, shader for the version of WebGL in question. So with that, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll hand it back. Are, are there any questions? I had a question uh, in general. I would like to know, has anybody I can't hear you, Kevin. Did you? You seem to have. Bull. Test uh, one, two, three. Can you hear me now? Yes, I, I can hear you now. Can't hear you anymore, though. Perhaps type it in the chat and I can. All right, can any anybody hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, I'd uh, like to know, does anybody in the audience have one that they did that they, they'd care to show? Three, two, one. Okay, that's a no then. Uh, with that. I got a, a question for Kevin on this. Um, what uh, the host fourth program this is running on? Ah, that's a great question. So it, it is a uh, it is one of my early attempts to do a web a web based fourth. It is um, it is actually I, I'm not particularly proud of the implementation. Basically, what it what it is doing uh, is it it is actually um, walking the program and doing a a conversion of it first to JavaScript. Um, using a, a bunch of substitutions, and then for the ones that are uh, animated, uh, that where there's the presence of the the, the t variable, uh, it is doing a second transformation uh, to uh, to transform uh, that that program into a uh, a web a WebGL shader. So it's a, a sort of a C-like language. So it's sort of uh, if you can imagine textual substitution. Uh, for for each of the the words so it parses each word and then has a one-to-one -one substitution for each of the, the different fragments of javascript uh that that it uh, that it gets converted into so it's a very primitive kind of an approach uh lacks uh immediate words uh things like that so it's fourth like in syntax but uh lacks the uh lacks the interpreter of fourth and and so it is in many ways kind of uh the, the the syntax, but not the not some of the substance of forth. If that makes any sense, and it, and it's all okay, it lives so on that website. Simpler, simpler. Uh, I take this as a web forth, and so the forth itself is not visible to the user. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's right. Brad, um, that's it. That's good. I re I remember you you did some stuff with a video camera. 
mixing yourself in live? Yes, there, 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 there was support for it. And actually on my list of stuff that I need to go back and do, um, it, appear, it appears that, that uh, some of that functionality uh, broke at some point. And I believe, actually, let me just, I can fire up and check here. But I, I believe uh, the last time I looked, there was a bug with it. Um, and what ends up happening is that if you, uh, let's see, let me, I'm actually just going to go ahead and try a thing to see what state it's in. Oops. Um, I, I believe that the, the current status is that unfortunately it, uh, it, it will substitute the SVFig logo. So, sorry, backing up a step. I added a, an option to sample um, your the the, uh, the camera video stream, and uh, the uh, you can get the RGB value out of a particular XY coordinate within the video stream and use that as part of your haiku. Um, the and what I would do as a fallback is in the case where a camera is not available, I would just use the the SVFig logo uh, for it. At some point. Uh, something about the way that I was doing the camera access uh, seems to have regressed, and I don't know if it's uh, at, at the moment it could be it's not work. It, yeah, it, it seems to not be working, and it's uh, probably something I should I should fix because it almost certainly is fixable, uh, and it means that some of the haikus that are out there that were intended to use video uh, no longer do. It would let you do sort of funhouse mirror type uh, perturbations because. Uh, you have the same limitation that you're calculating each pixel individually and don't have any shared state. So there's sort of limitations as to uh, how much resampling uh, of the image and you can do and so forth. So, so yes, we, we had that functionality, uh, but I, I, I'm not, it, it seems to have regressed. And this is one of the challenges uh, as the thing has grown and as I added two different variations of ways to do audio and this way to do video, uh, and, and those limited ways to do interactivity, it's actually gotten a little bit challenging to keep them all sort of up and working and, and uh, yeah, anyways. But you're, yes, you're reminding me I, I, I should get back to fixing that. Uh, it's probably some silly thing that's changed with some of the web APIs. They've gotten a little bit more uh, cautious about uh, web APIs that have access to sensitive things and so, camera is a sensitive thing and it may be that I there's some series of steps that I have to do to more explicitly get the user's consent to access their camera. It used to be a little bit easier to, to just get their permission one time and then uh, then they're sort of allowed to use it on your website. It was very, it was very memorable. I will endeavor to resurrect it. Cool. Um, oh, I just realized that in the schedule, I, my other my other my other presentation was.